Hi everyone, it's me, Jan, PM in Bloomreach. And in this video, I'm going to show you all the changes we released in version 1244 and 1245 in report feature. I would love to give you a little bit more overview on how you can use them in the new designs to make your transition from the old version a little bit smoother. Uh, in this video, I'm not going to cover specific use cases, what you should be using reports for. Uh, if you're interested in specific use cases such as campaign evaluation or any other custom evaluation, please check our documentation or ask in the Slack channel in the community, or you can join our academic courses. So let's jump into changes. Before we start, the most important information here is that we haven't changed anything in terms of how the report is calculated. We just reorganized the UI of the building part and we did a couple of improvements in a chart and table part uh, to make it easier even for beginners. Because we heard many times that the old reports feels like that you are a uh, pilot in an airplane as uh, that reports feels like the airplane cockpit and there's so many buttons, it's so overwhelming. And we just wanted to make it more organized at the first time and help you to navigate even in more complex reports. So let's dive into sections. We have three main sections, metrics, drill downs, and report filters. In metrics, you are defining all the metrics you would like to measure as you have been used to before. Once you have all the metrics defined, you can go into drill downs. Here, you can define what attributes you would like to use for drilling down the metrics in rows or in columns. In report filters, you can define the filter for drill downs and metrics as well at once. So instead of going into each of those metrics and defining the metric filter there, you can use report filter to apply the filters for all metrics and all drill downs at once. So let's jump into each of those sections individually. Okay, uh, let's take a look on metrics. So as you can see here, I have one metric in a metric section. And before you could click on show details, uh, but now you can collapse the definition here if you click in the middle or on the, on the right side, you have the arrow. So click and you will see the definition here. Count customers. All right. So what if we would like to use, for example, already existing metrics you have in your project? So you can click here on the left side and you can pick, for example, a uh, person click rate, or you can build a new one, custom metric you would like to have only in this report. So let's say that we would like to build a new metric here. Okay, you use the metric. And what if I would like to rename the metric? You can click on rename icon here. You can delete the content, write test metric, for example, and press enter or click away. And that's it. You just rename the metric for this particular report. What if I would love to save the metric for the third analysis and just to keep the metric in your project, not just in this report? So you can save it here in, with a bookmark icon. And if you save it, it's automatically converted into the reference metric. So now you are not you are not building the metric from scratch, but you are using already existing metric you have in your project. So for example, if I go here into metrics and uh, I can write test metric. As you can see, I have the test metric here and I'm using this metric here in the report. Click the pencil if you would love to continue in, in the changes. As you have been used to, you can switch into formula. Uh, so you can build a formula here or a simple metric here. Nothing has changed. Uh, we just push it here. Formats, nothing has changed. Uh, everything as you are used to have it. Uh, you can pick, for example, euros or, or pounds or persons. Nothing has changed. What has changed here? Uh, you have been used to use modifiers. So modifiers are now called view options here. And if you click on, on this icon, you see all modifiers for the particle metric that are uh, that will be appeared in a, in a table part. So for example, you can add heat map. You can add some aggregation for each of the columns of the, of the table or you can use column total percent extra, extra. 
you can delete the metric or you can duplicate the metric or you can hide details. Let's say that you would like to build the metric. So on the left side, you have aggregation. Nothing has changed as well. In the customers, you can switch to events. And now we push it here to give you a little bit more sentence uh, feeling that you are building a sentence. So count events. Yes, I would like to count all events or just first event for each customer or last event. And then you can specify what specific event you would like to count. So let's say, for example, station start. Now you can define uh, further the filters, or if you are advanced user, you can use metric filters here, and you can define the specific date filter for this particular metric. You can filter customers, or you can filter the values of the metric. The values of the metric define, uh, for example, I would love to see all values of the metric that are greater than 100. So in the table, in the results, you won't have anything that is below or lower than 100, for example. Okay, that's it. Let's take a look at the drill downs right now. Nothing has changed from the calculation perspective. As I said before, we still have rows and columns and they works exactly as before. Uh, so for example, you can use drill down in rows to drill down the metrics vertically in the table, or you can use columns to drill it down horizontally. So basically, uh, let's say that we have one metric here and we would love to uh, drill it down by, uh, for example, country. So this is some custom property and we are using it for drilling down the data or grouping the data by country. Right now you can specify the grouping and you can use none, top or whatever you'd like. You can change the format as before. You can show an A, show height, the values that doesn't have any country set, or you can delete the dr drill down or you can duplicate the drill down. What if I use also drill down in columns here? So for example, I would love to see drill down in columns by, I don't know, city. So as you can see on the left side, Vertically, I'm drilling down by country uh, and horizontally, I'm drilling down by city in the columns. One more thing that has changed in drill downs. Now, if you drill down by even, for example, uh, campaign action type, you would like to maybe use the aggregate for, uh, for drill down. So let's convert the event into aggregate and you can build the aggregate from scratch. What has changed here? We have a little bit different design for, for the data filter here. Uh, and also you can click in the middle on, on the uh, arrow on the right side to just hide it and keep the building part a little bit more organized uh, for everyone who is not in reports every day. So let's take a look on report filters. Uh, as you can see here in the metrics, I have metric for session start event type and for view item event type. Both those events, I can define further in event filters. So if you don't want to specify uh, the filter for each metric separately, for example, I have two metrics for session start, I can define the session start filter here. So this is much uh, better for reports where you have multiple different event types in uh, different metrics. So you can easily define the global filter here and the same apply for uh, customer filters. If you don't want to specify customer filter for each individual metric, you can define the segment of customers here in a customer filter. Now what we have switched here uh, before on the, in the top right corner, you could define the time frame. We push it here in the report filters. So you can define it here to filter what time range you would like to use for the calculation, or you can define the time range here. So uh, it works exactly as before. You can easily switch between two days, seven days, 14 days, et cetera, or define your custom time frame here, the same as before. So let's take a look what we have changed in a table and chart part. So in a chart and table part, we did a couple of changes as well. So as you can see, as I mentioned, the time frame is on the top. You can switch between chart plus table, chart, 
or table only. On the right side, you can change the shape of the of the graph, actually columns, stack column bar, et cetera, et cetera, or you can change or set the axis limit. Here in the table part, you can now define what format the metric should have. So if you click the number here, you can show customers, send a campaign, or change the format, actually. The same you can do if you click on particle metric in the graph. So if I click on the campaign one, I can change the format as well here. What else? Modifiers and view options. If you hover on some particle metric here, which is called, for example, campaign one, you can change the modifiers or view options here. So you can do it on two places, in a metric, or you can do it in a table directly. So you can use the aggregation, show value S or visual uh, aspects, for example, heat map, or you can highlight something, et cetera, et cetera. It works exactly like before. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for watching this video. And I hope that I introduce you all the changes in version 1244 and 1245 in report feature. Uh, thank you so much and have a great day.